In this video, I'm going to remind you about something free from Apple that you should be using if you trust your family. Hi there guys, welcome back to me, David, Talking Tech. And in this video, I said how much you trust your family. That's because we're talking about the hidden gem from Apple that I'm sure you've seen in your iOS devices and on Macs. It's called family sharing, but are you using Okay, it? hands up, hands up. I will admit it, I like Apple. There you go. Guilty as charged, my lord. I've got quite a lot of Apple products around me already. I've got more on the way, as you know. But one thing I will say about Apple is you don't get an awful lot for free from the Californian tech titans. But with family sharing, that is altogether different. It is there for us all to use. And for the most part, it's free as well. It came to my attention again because of my current crush and love affair over Apple TV+. Plus. If you've been watching recent videos, you'll know that I'm into some of their programs in a big way, like Slow Horses, Morning Show, and We Crashed. And it's because of that that I found and suddenly came to my conscience again about family sharing. More about that a little bit later on. But first of all, let's look at what it actually is. So at its very core, it is exactly what the name suggests. Family sharing is a way of sharing content across iOS devices, Mac, and across separate Apple ID as well. To qualify to be part of the family sharing program, you do need to have an Apple ID, and we'll be talking about that a little bit later on as well. But there's so many apps included that you can share, including Apple News, Fitness, Apple Arcade, Photos, Calendars, Reminders. It goes on and on and on. It's a really great way of including the family members together and creating this cohesive area, this, this portal, if you like, where you're all included. They call the person that sets it up rather grandly the organizer, which I love. It sounds like something out of the Sopranos, the organizer. Uh, but apart from the organizer, you can have five other members of your family included. And when you set it up, you choose a the payment method that's going to be attributed to the account. And also you decide what of the apps that you've got that you want to share with the other family members. It's really simple to set up. If you go to settings, tap on your ID, and then you'll find it in their family sharing. Tap on that, add family members. Generally, it's done by sending an iMessage to the person, although you can do it in person as well. But generally, it's sent via iMessage. They get a, an invite via a link. They accept it. Apple sharing is set up on their device as well. It's as simple as that. Not only is family sharing free, it actually saves money as well. You don't need to replicate and duplicate on accounts. You don't need to have more than one Apple Music account. You don't need to have more than one iCloud storage account or apps, you don't need to be buying the same apps. Once they're purchased in amongst the family plan, they are there for everyone to use. It's just, as I say, the more I've got into it again this week, I realize what I've been missing out on. I'd love to know though, are you using it regularly? Have you used it regularly? Will you start using it now you've uh, remembered that it's there again? It's such a great app and it's just so easy to share so much out amongst the family. Now to be part of family sharing, you do need an Apple ID and email. For the under 13s, that means you as the guardian, the head of house, will need to set that up for them. But I did smile as I was putting this video together. What a wonderful marketing plan by Apple to hook you in that early that that uh, Apple ID can then go through into your adulthood. Fantastic plan. But apart from that, I think it's quite an altruistic feature they've got here. But once you've set that up for your kids under 13, you only need to do it once. But there's a great feature called Ask to Buy. So you can avoid getting those nasty bills at the end of the month and also Keep an eye on what they are trying to put onto their devices. With the Ask to Buy, you'll get a push notification telling you what the under 13s are looking to purchase. You can approve the content that's in it and also, of course, the price. And then from within that app, you can also put limits on how much screen time they get on a certain app and also on spending as well. So when you're setting up for the under 13s family sharing, I definitely suggest you having Ask to Buy on. I'm sure it will save you pounds and pounds or dollars and dollars wherever you happen to be watching this video. So let's have a little walk through some of the individual apps and areas of this service and how they work for you and what they'll be included. For instance, in iTunes and App Store purchases, any music, movies or shows that you have purchased will be available to the entire group. So there's no need for them to duplicate or replicate those purchases. And any previously purchased apps will transfer forward and be available to all of the family in the family sharing plan. I mentioned at the top of the video that family sharing is free and it is, but there's just one bold on that you might want to pay extra for. I do it myself. It's £14.99 a month here in the UK, and I think it's similar in dollars over in the States, and it's the Apple Music family plan. And for that, it means that each of the six members of the group in your family get their own individual Apple Music plan, their own streaming service. They can listen to as much Apple Music as they want. They'll get a personal, private account, library, and recommendations. So it treats you as complete individuals, but it just means you're paying once, which is a lot cheaper than paying six times for individual subscriptions. It really is such a good service. It's really worth taking up. 
Two other features included in the family sharing plan are iCloud storage and location sharing. With location sharing, if you're trying to keep a track on where kids are, you can obviously have that enabled so you can see physically where they are, but you can also turn that off. But it still represents a good idea because for all of the family members in that group, if something gets lost, like an iPhone or a pair of AirPods, you can help find it, hopefully through the Find My feature. And then as for iCloud storage, again, represents great value for money, say as the organizer i could i can't stop saying that i see myself as tony soprano suddenly i could uh, pay for two terabytes of storage the whole family are entitled to use that one storage plan i don't get to see what they're storing there their files are kept uh, totally private to them all i get to see is how much storage they're using but the main benefit of it is a it's cheaper and b again it's all under one cohesive collective plan so it's just a neat tidy way of keeping the family storage all together there's a few other features that we include as well that are worthy of mention in family sharing screen time. You can see how much time your kids are spending on, well, not only on screen, but on given apps as well, which can help you monitor their usage. Purchasing and asking to buy, I mentioned about that before. So when you set the plan up initially, it will ask you for your card details. So any purchases made by the entire family will all come down to you, your account, your card. So you obviously need, to, well, with other family members that are adults, you need some trust. I'm leaving that one to you. But with kids, I say, I su really suggest you have on Ask to Buy, which means that you'll get that push notification. So any purchase they are looking to make, you'll get a notification and you authorize and allow before they can do it. And also shared albums. So the minute that you set up a family sharing group, a photo album is put into your photo roll. Everyone can add photos into the shared album. You can make comments, you can add location, you can do all sorts of things. And not only do you get photos in there as well, you also get calendar reminders and reminders, all part of family sharing. So if you've got a family that are, say, a little distance apart and you want to pull everyone together, I really think you need to look at family sharing again. It's there, it's hidden away, but nobody really makes any kind of mention of it. And it's a great feature to have. I'd love to know, are you going to start using it again? So my question to you is, why wait? At the end of this video, Go and take another look at family sharing. It is such a good feature. For me, it came to light again because of the movie Coda. I was watching it, wanted to share it with my daughter. She hasn't got a subscription to Apple TV+. Plus. I sent her the link, family sharing, job done. It is such a good feature. It's a way of keeping the family together. I'd love to know how you're going to use it. I told you where to find it on iOS device. It's really simple. On Mac, if you go to System Preferences and again, look for your ID and you'll find it under there. You can begin adding family members to it, send them the invites. It's as simple as that and you are in control. And I'd love to know, are you already using it? Was it just me that had forgotten about it or had you forgotten about it too? Are you going to start using it again? Let me know in the comments below. It'd be lovely to hear from you. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching on this video and I'll catch you on the next one.